Phillips. We're now joined on the phone by head coach for the Spring Mills Lady Cardinals, head coach George Goss down in Charleston after a big win last night over Cabell Midland, 42-39. And uh, it was a really good game for your team, especially down the stretch. It seemed like down the stretch of the game, everybody was hitting everything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, some big shots there. We hit down the stretch, some big clutch free throws um, that kind of put us over the top and, and gave us that lead to close the game out. Um, you know, just extremely proud uh, of the kids. We didn't start out great, but, you know, sometimes it's not about how good you start, it's about how you finish. Coach, you're able to hold them to uh, under 40 points. Uh, talk about how your defense ha has been so important for your team this year. Yeah, I mean, that's something you guys, you know, I've talked to you a bunch this year. That's something, you know, we've been hanging our hat all year with defense, defense, defense. And, um, you know, it showed up last night. And, uh, you know, we knew and we always know if our offense isn't triggering, we got to rely on our defense to keep us in the ball game, and, and that's exactly what we did. And we were fortunate enough to grab a lead and hold on to it long enough to survive. Coach Gosk, in big games like this in the state tournament, you need your stars to shine, and Kyla Dandridge did just that with 25 points to get the win and help your team out. Just talk about her game as a whole in that one and why she was such a difference maker. Yeah, Kyla stepped up on the big stage last night. Um, you know, that's something she's been capable of every game this year, but throughout the season she's kind of fed off of her teammates, um, you know, during the regular season. Uh, but last night, I think for us uh, – Offensively, the kids themselves, you know, found the mismatches. And a lot of the time, the ball ended up in Kyle's hand last night, and it allowed her to take advantage of the mismatch we, we thought, you know, was good for our team. And, and uh, you know, she, she took advantage of those mismatches. She was able to, to put the ball in the heap last night. And, uh, you know, that was tremendous for us moving forward. And Coach, you talk about it's all about how you finish, and Olivia Bolduc finishes the game with the final five points for your team. She scores 12 in the game, and uh, obviously her points down the stretch were critical to winning, getting the win last night. Yeah, and that's what that's what I love about this team. You know, Kyla carried us, you know, through the game, and uh, you know, it's somebody else. Olivia stepped up in the you know final minutes of the game with that big shot, you know, under a minute left, and then some clutch free throws to finish the game. So. You know, it, it, this team is just, you know, it's a fun team to coach because any given night it can be it can be any kid. And, you know, when you have a team like that, it, it makes for a pretty, pretty special experience. Coach, obviously uh, the goals aren't complete yet, but uh, to get this playoff win after last season when you went there and it was a 49-25 loss to Morgantown, uh, what do you think this does for your program, and how do you, I guess, build on this momentum moving forward in this state tournament? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, this is something, obviously, we've been working towards um, as a program, you know, in the previous years. And to be able to, to get this notch in our belt and, and come up with this win, you know, which I, I believe is the first uh, quad A win at the state tournament for any girls program since we transitioned to quad A. Um, so, you know, that's kind of historical for our program. But like you said, the, the work's not finished yet. Um, we've got two games left, and, and we'd like to be able to get this next one and play for a state championship. And, Coach, you know, looking at some stats here as they were for the state tournament, they uh, do a box score, and uh, it seems like one of the key factors in this game was that uh, Dandridge, who had a great night shooting, she also had six turnovers, and total for your team was 11 or steals. She had six steals, or yeah, six steals, 11 steals for your team compared to five steals for Cabell Midland, which gives you guys 19 points off turnovers compared to their nine. How big were the steals in getting those points off the turnovers? Yeah, that's a good, that's a great, uh, great question because, um, you know, that's something I, when they hand, they hand you the box score right at halftime and right after the game, and that's something that immediately stuck out to me was our points off the turnovers, and you know, to get 19 and, and, you know, to hold them to only nine off of the turnovers, um, that was tremendous for us moving forward. And that, that, that actually paid dividends for us in the third quarter as we were able to outscore them 17-7. Um, you know, they outscored us in the fourth by, I think, three or four. So that was a huge third quarter for us. And those huge points off turnovers carried us into that fourth quarter with some, with some great confidence. What are you guys doing with your day off today? Yeah, so we've been to the Civic Center already. We watched a little bit of basketball this morning. We're uh, currently at the at the mall here. 
grabbing some lunch, and then we're going to head to uh, Charleston Catholic about 3 o'clock, and we'll, we'll have about an hour practice, shoot around, and then we'll head back to the, to the hotel, kind of relax there tonight. We're going to try to catch that Spring Mills versus Jefferson boys game, have a little watch party back at the hotel, have some pizza, kind of kick back and relax. And, Coach, tomorrow you'll take on number one Wheeling Park. I'm assuming you got to watch a little bit of their game yesterday against Washington. What's going to be the toughest thing that you're going to have to do against this uh, number one team in Wheeling Park? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think for, for um, us it becomes you have, to get, you have to stop them in transition. They like to push the tempo. Um, and then for us on, on the offensive end, um, you know, we're going to have to, we're gonna have to work the ball. But we can't get caught up in that running game that, that, that they like to play. Um, do I think there will be times where we can run? Yes. Um, but there's going to be also times where we need to slow it down and run our offense and not, not turning into an up-and-down game. Um, so I think those are some of the keys and the takeaways that we need to pay attention to uh, tomorrow. Does it help at all, Coach, that they faced a, an EPAC opponent so you, you know how they, I guess, prepared against the common and what you were able to do that was similar to them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, in terms of watching them versus Washington, I think – um, you know, they're, they're similar to us a little bit in the fact that they do like to get up and pressure you. They do like to create turnovers and look to run, um, you know, on offense. And, and they put up a Boku number of points. Um, and so, you know, I think uh, in, in ways that we can limit that is, you know, to, to run our stuff on our offense, um, you know, and not get caught up in that transition game. But, um, you know, kind of it's a chess match. So you, you got to, in some ways, you got to be smarter than your opponent at times. And, that's what we're going to try to do tomorrow. Spring Mills girls basketball coach George Gosk is our guest. And I hope we're talking on Friday about a win heading into the state championship game. Absolutely, man. This one feels pretty good. And, and we want the next one to feel even better and, and you know, give us a chance to play for a, a state championship for the Eastern Panhandle. All right, Coach.